Welcome to Dumpster Fire for the last week of February 2018. If you've ever engaged in soaking, 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 you know, you've soaked, you had carpet time, soaking, something like that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. We're going to get to it today. We've got some crazy stuff. I hope you're sitting down. Maybe grab something to drink, popcorn or whatever. This is going to be a weird episode of Dumpster Fire. But then again, you know, uh, Dumpster Fire is usually kind of weird that way. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, you're you're looking at um, Carol Arnott of the Toronto Airport Blessing. You have to put blessing in air quotes. And uh, she recently taught on soaking using a prop Mr. Sponge. Hi, how are you? Yep. So this is SpongeBob uh, soaking teaching kind of whatever. You get the point. Let me back this up and uh, we will get to it. Hope you're sitting down. Here we go. We want more of the Holy Spirit, don't we? Yeah. And so we want to go back but also go forward you know it's a right because if wait if you go back you can't go f never mind i'm just being logical sorry amazing because a lot of you when you came in here at the beginning looked like my friend and i want to introduce you to my friend some of you have already met my friend but i want to introduce you to my friend and my friend is called she's I, yeah i hate to say this she is using that really irritating kindergarten teacher voice you you know what i'm talking about like it's like it's that who who would like to come up and 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 meet with our new friend today mr caterpillar as he's you know, this is a, yeah it's like romper room mr sponge <sighs> and a lot of you came in kind of looking like Mr. Sponge. You were not very flexible. No, no. You were kind of crusty and hard. Yeah, you're crusty. Yeah, I came to church crusty. How, oh, please, what do I got to do to decrust myself? I need more spirit. I don't want to be crusty. You were a little dried out. I don't need it. Weren't you? Yes, yes. I notice now that I needed moisturizer. A lot more smiles. And you look much more relaxed. And so I want us to just watch Mr. Sponge over the next little while. Because we're gonna Yeah, normally when you go to church they talk about Jesus. No, not Carol or not. She's talking about Mr. Sponge. This is weird. That Mr. Sponge to soaking. Ah, and I want to see what happens to Mr. Sponge when he soaks in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> what? You want to see what happens to Mr. Sponge when he soaks in the Holy Spirit? <laughs> what is this? So we have some H2O here. Mm hmm. Well, Holy Spirit, we ask you to fill it. Mm. How many of you pray over your back? What? You're praying for the Holy Spirit to fill the water that you're going to put Mr. Sponge in? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh. What is this? Is my water when you baptize people? Ah, Lord, we just ask you to anoint this water. And Lord, we just put Mr. Sponge in and let him soak for a little while, okay? And this is why you don't ever preach having had too much to drink. You know, just this is really looney tunes here and see what happens to him oh i guarantee you even if you hadn't prayed for the holy spirit to fill the water of that little thing 
that Mr. Sponge would have done just fine in there. <sighs> oh, man. It's really hard. My goodness, Mr. Sponge. You really need to have a drink. Wow. <laughs> Reminds me of that episode of SpongeBob where, you know, SpongeBob doesn't have any water. He's like, I don't need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. Okay. Mm. I hope I'm not that hard. But you know, we get on with life, we get busy with life, and we forget to do the good things. We forget to pro to take a bath. I mean, you know, what what do we forget to do exactly? Hair our hearts. Now she goes on, by the way to preach an entire sermon on soaking. And we now have jumped to kind of like the conclusion of her preaching and teaching where we finally get to see what has happened to Mr. Sponge over the course of the sermon. Now, real quick, I've gone to BibleGateway.com, BibleGateway.com, and uh, we're going to just do a Bible search. We're going to search for the word soaking. Let's take a look. And no. No. There are no, there's no examples of soaking in, how about soaking prayer? And nope, nothing there. So you're going to note that nowhere in scripture we taught about the important practice of soaking. Soaking, yeah, but uh, she's teaching about this here. So let's check on our Mr. Sponge, shall we? Please, yeah. See if all this soaking time has helped him at all, okay? How much you want to bet it has? Because we all know what happens when sponges are left in water for a long time. So, Mr. Sponge, how are you doing? Oh, my. Yo! Oh, he did for sure! Gracious. happy oh my word you are sloshy wet you are soft and you look slightly drunk mr. sponge right yeah oh yeah this this is this ain't biblical I don't know what this is Ooh. wow whoops better watch it Whoa, he is saturated. And of course, she poured the Holy Spirit, you know, into the water and stuff. So, yeah, that's why she's acting drunk now. The presence of God. <laughs> ah, Mr. Sponge is anointed. <laughs> now, this is weird and creepy at all. This is, this is normal church, you know. This is really <laughs> weird. Really creepy. Ah, do you want to become saturated? By Where in scripture does it say we can become saturated like this? Presence of God. He can do it for a hard old sponge. How much more can he do it for you? Right, yeah, I mean, because... To God be all the glory for making Mr. Sponge <laughs> be so spongy as a <laughs> See if he could do it for Mr. Sponge. Ah, I mean, this is like testimony time. Mr. Sponge, tell us, how'd you go from being so hard and flaky and crusty to being so spongy-like? Oh. Well, there was the Holy Spirit and it was in the water and I was soaking for like an hour and woo. Yeah, okay. Now, he, here's the thing. As crazy as that is, well, it's not as crazy as this use of a sponge at church. Here we have, well, let's let's just watch. This is a, a prophetess. Yeah. During this miracle, healing, and deliverance service, God used his prophet, prophetess Dr. Maddie Nottage, to deliver scores of people from demonic bondage, sickness, and and disease with all right so god's prophet maddie nottage yeah she was doing all kinds of delivering and stuff how did you do it how did you do it dr nottage how'd you do it 
Two brand new anointed buckets, a sponge, and the powerful in Getty water. The demons of sickness and oppression instantly leave the people of God. Really? With a sponge and N Getty water? Woo! Oh man, she took the gloves off there, you know. I didn't realize that there were people who were going to exercise the N Getty water option. I mean, that's like right below nuclear. You know, all those demons, uh, they're, they're, as soon as they see in Getty water, oh, oh, they know the gig is up. <laughs> Hang on a second there. Let me go back to Bible get Gateway. Uh, we got to look for N Getty water. Hang on a second here. Let's take a look. Nope, there are no results for N Getty water. <sighs> okay, well, let's go back to Dr. Nottage. And her Engedi water demon deliverance soaking thingy ministry. God, let electrical fire, Holy Ghost fire, Sakanda Rabada Rabada there, deliverance fire, hit this water now. Yeah, now notice something here. Um, the sound that you heard of thunder. That was done in post production. Yeah. Yeah, see that that didn't really happen while she was doing that little ritual. And get the water electrified. <laughs> Did you hear that? She went, right. Yeah, this is the lady who uh, a, a while back we covered her because uh, she she wasn't casting out demons using Engedi water. Uh, she was using, well, you'll see. Come here! Come here! Come here! Out! Come here! Who are you? Come on! Come on! Come on! So, I mean, this woman's got quite the arsenal. I mean, not only does she make farting noises to get rid of demons, she has in Getty water and fire buckets and stuff. Out! Now, fire! Get up! <laughs> he just can't make this up. So she's got in Getty water now. It's a it's a little less offensive than the farting noises. Jesus, Mr. Sponge, you just hit that lady in the face with in Getty water. <laughs> See what I tell Mr. You? Sponge, Mr. Sponge, you were just hard and crusty just a few minutes ago, and now you're like getting everybody wet with Engedi water. Not one! <laughs> Demons out! Get out! <laughs> out! Go! <laughs> watch him! Watch him! <laughs> Get out of her! <laughs> yeah, so I, I think you kind of get the <laughs> get the idea there. <sighs> yeah, this is the current state of affairs. Mr. Sponge, after soaking in the Holy Spirit in Toronto, <laughs> assaulted people being ministered to by Dr. Nottage. All right, uh, moving along, uh, let's take a look at our next thing. Oh, by the way, that does kind of remind me. Uh, you know, uh, what, we, <laughs> what we saw Dr. Nottage doing you know, Michael Brown has done stuff that's kind of similar, uh, but not quite with the flair that Dr. Nottage is engaged in. No sponge was used at the Brownsville revival, but uh, here's some footage from Brownsville. You find far more scripture for doing this than having a one-hour service that goes through a program. Do it all. Ignite! Ignite! Oh. Ignite! He wants people to ignite. Sounds like he's passing a kidney stone. Now we're gonna note something here. He claims that you know this was the Holy Spirit and the weightiness of the spirit that was falling on these people, but we're gonna note that it was the weightiness of his hand as he pushes their heads down to the ground. No joke. Get the sponge!
Sometimes you got to put out the fire. As he pushes people down. No wonder they call them knock them down brown. Yeah, it's kind of the same spectacle that we saw from <clears throat> Dr. Nottage. All right, moving along, let's check in with uh, <clears throat> one of my least favorite people, Joyce Meyer, who recently was just waxing eloquent, if you would, about you know decreeing and declaring. See if you can put this together mathematically in your mind as she explains how our words cre make stuff happen. Yeah, here's Joyce Meyer. God taught me by the Holy Spirit how to start confessing the Word of God out loud mm -hmm. and calling things that were not yet a reality in my life as if they already existed. Now, just in case you're going to say, oh, don't tell me this is a name it, claim it message. Well, that's what that is. The whole point is, is in Romans 4, 17, the Bible says that we serve a God who calls things that do not exist as if they already existed. And right. Yeah. Romans says that we serve a God who calls the things that are not as, as though they exist. You'll note who's doing the calling there. God is. It doesn't say we call the things that are not as though they are. It says we, that God does. So you're going to note here that uh, somehow the math isn't working. You know, so if you put two plus two in, uh, in her way of thinking, that equals 22, you know. So God calls the things that are not as though they are. Therefore, ergo, he speaks life to dead things and they come back to life. Yes, he does. So that's how powerful your words are. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. Two plus two is not 22. Yeah, see, that's how powerful the God we have is. <laughs> you know, not how powerful my words, because here's the thing. I ain't God, and everyone's going, amen, thank God for that, yeah, and me too. Okay, so, so how do you jump the, exactly that canyon that she just, you, you've heard of Evil Knievel, right? You know, and he rocketed across the Grand Canyon at one point. But here, you know, she's coming down the track, getting ready to make this jump, and is, God calls the things that are not as though they are. Yes, this is true. Yes, this is true. Therefore, your words are powerful. She goes off the ramp, and she's going to literally end up in the abyss. I mean, therefore, I can call these things. No! <laughs> you see Wiley e. Coyote just falling to his death here. Uh, yeah, no, it don't work that way. That, that, that tells us how powerful God God is not my words. You sure the Holy Spirit revealed this to you? She said that at the beginning of the video. Uh -huh. You can speak life into dead circumstances in your life, and you can see the resurrection of power of God in your life. Now you can. <laughs> I I can speak life into the dead circumstances in my. What are you talking about? just say anything you want to say and make it happen but you can speak the word of god out loud and those words have power you know there's a scripture that says that angels hearken to the voice of god's word they don't listen to our complaining so if i just blurt out god's word it's like the bat signal for 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 the angels <laughs> They just can't make this up. Okay. But they have to listen to the word of God. And we have angels that are assigned to us. You know, you have guardian angels. Yeah. We have angels assigned to us. And if you want them to work in your life, then you need to start agreeing with what God says and stop just saying any little thing that floats through your brain. <laughs> Where does it say that the angels, you know, they want to help? You know, they've been assigned to us. But when they show up, it's like, I'm here for my assignment. You're my assignment, so, but I can't do anything. I'm going to cross my arms until you learn how to say things in agreement with the Holy Spirit and stop complaining. Where does it say the angel's ability to help us or willingness to help us is contingent on me agreeing with things and stuff? Where does it say that? Did you notice the long pause after she said that? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll clap. <sighs> <laughs> now, 
I'm getting some funny looks. It's like Yeah, it's because you're preaching heresy, lady. You don't have any trouble complaining out loud. You don't have any trouble gossiping out loud. So why do we have such a hard time confessing the word of God out loud? Well, because Satan doesn't want us to do it. You say, well, why do I have to confess it out loud? Because words contain power. I am the world's first fully functioning homicidal artist. What? Words contain power. Why do I have to confess it out loud? Because words contain power. Have you ever read the story of Hannah? Uh-huh. Hannah in the book of 1 Samuel. She's the mother of Samuel. She was barren. And when she prayed, she didn't pray out loud. Nope, she was praying inside of her spirit. She didn't utter a single word, but she was laying her heart out before God in her own soul. And, of course, Eli, the, the high priest, thought she was drunk and told her to give up her wine. And she said, oh, I'm not drunk. I'm pouring out my soul to God. Rose bros paraphrase. And what did he say? Well, may God grant you your petition. And God heard her prayer and answered her prayer and gave her a son. And she didn't say a single word. Uh-huh. What kind of a message, what kind of a meeting would this be today if you all came and I said, well, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> you know, you came because you wanted to hear what I was going to say. You wanted to hear what God was going to speak to you through me. And it's the word. Yeah, I'm 100% convinced God ain't speaking through you right now. Nope that are bringing the power of God to you and when that it renews your mind and then it gets down into your life and it begins to change things in your life God's word contains power there's power yeah God's word is living and active sharper than any double-edged sword and God the Holy Spirit is intimately linked with his word but what you're describing is not what God's word describes about itself inherent in the word of God now, so when you remember earlier she said we got to say God's word and the God's angels are attracted to that and and that you it's God's not going to just act on anything you say but you got to say God's word watch what she ends up giving as an example here speak the word of God over your life or over your children's life or over their futures one of the things that I started to say my so speak the word of God over the future of your children's lives which biblical text is she going to speak over her children right here? Watch what she does. Kids were all little. Was all of my children grow up and they marry born again, spirit filled men and women, and they all serve God all of their life. And you know, everyone. Notice she didn't quote a single passage of scripture. She said God doesn't just listen to anything. It's only the word of God. That, that wasn't the word of God. That was what she wanted and that wasn't a prayer was it i am speaking that my kids are gonna all marry a yeah uh-huh children are married to somebody that loves god they're all in some way shape or form serving god in ministry yeah see she spoke god's word no she didn't speak god's word so and notice that wasn't a prayer you know kind of talking about this you want to see what this looks like in action well, let's take a look at the ministry of Todd White, who was recently preaching at Gateway Church. That's where Robert Morris holds sway. And uh, he recently preached there. And uh, let me back this up just a smudge and uh, listen to uh, his teaching on the God of miracles. He's going to lead everybody there in a prayer. At least he says it's a prayer, but it's not a prayer. Yeah, it's the same doctrine that we heard from... Joyce Meyer about speaking words and stuff, but watch what he does. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I need you guys to stand up again. So, sorry. I just I have a. I I just had the Lord just tell me at every service we're to pray for each other. Stop just saying any little thing that floats through your brain. So the Lord, the Lord, the Lord said that. To do. I just believe that God is the God of miracles. How many of you believe that? All right. Well, if you don't believe that, you're about to find out because he's amazing. And I've watched him heal so many people over the years. 
Yeah, now we're going <clears> to <throat> do a little historical research here. Yes, he claims that he's seen God heal so many people over the years. Uh, the best way I can describe Todd White is that he is a street uh, magician. Yeah, let me explain. If you were to go to YouTube and look for the video titled Tide Todd White hyphen more healing on the streets, you're going to note this is an earlier version of Todd White. And there's Patricia King. Let me back this up as he is going to be doing miraculous work with so many miracles he's seen. This will be an example of one of the miracles he's seen over the years. Okay. Do you have anything physically that gives you any trouble? At all? Back. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. So is it hurt right now? Like when you're moving around? A little bit. So like if God healed it, you'd know right away? Dude, God will take that from you right now. Yeah, come on. I'm so he serious, loves you man. Guys so much. Come on, man. Let us pray for you. Okay, let me see your hand. What's your name? DeAndre. DeAndre. Mm -hmm. DeAndre, you're amazing, man. You are. You yeah. have amazing purpose, dude. Mm -hmm. You're amazing. Father, I thank you for DeAndre in Jesus' yeah. name. Back, I command you right now in Jesus' name. Let him go. Every bit of pain. Now, notice he's not praying for DeAndre. He's commanding his back to do stuff. Mm -hmm. As if, well, Todd White is a little deity or something, right? Let him go. Every muscle, every tendon. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Every disc right now. Let him go. Man, I'm hearing this. You get back pain all the time. You get a constant. It's a yeah. constant. Yeah. Man, sit. Take your backpack away from your back and sit back the whole way. Okay. Are you ready for the miraculous? Oh, wait till you see this miracle, folks. You are going to just be in awe. Because I'm hearing the same thing. Let me see your feet. And there's Todd White with the old leg lengthening trick. Uh-huh. Yeah, no joke. This is a parlor trick. Yeah, and you just kind of, it involves like pulling somebody's shoe out a little bit and then pushing it back. Yeah. It's the same thing. I want you to look and see. Come down here. You want to see this from this angle. Come down here and tell me which leg is short. Come here. Uh -huh. It's throwing your back out. Wait. The left one, right? It's at least an inch short, right? Yeah. Because I broke it. You broke it and they yeah. put it back together and they didn't yeah. put all the pieces back. Yeah, I broke it. You ready to get a piece? Yeah. Yeah, watch. Daddy, well, thank you. In Jesus' name. Left leg, I command you grow. You right now. That? In Jesus' name. Yeah, this is a parlor trick. The, yeah, so this is the kind of quality of miracle that we get from Todd White. And by the way, you're going to note he's not actually praying for people. And when we see him at um, Gateway Church, he's not going to pray for nobody either. He's just going to do a lot of commanding, and we'll pay attention to what's going on here. So back to Gateway Church. Here's Todd White doing a lot of commanding, but no praying. But he's going to say we're going to pray, but they're not going to actually pray many people that even don't believe because it doesn't matter what you believe if the person beside you believes I promise put your hand on somebody's shoulder beside you please so here's what we're gonna do we're just gonna pray for one another so I'm gonna take a now he said we're gonna pray but he's not a, a minute or two are you ready mm -hmm. who believes that God can do this all right now before we get into the prayer that uh, Todd White's going to do. The man who's seen so many miracles, you know, like legs lengthening and stuff. Which, by the way, he does that exact trick in the Holy Ghost movie at a corn concert. Uh, so we're going to take a look at, well, you know, a little bit of biblical stuff here. Let's take a look, number one, at the Greek word used in the New Testament for prayer. That Greek word is prosukomai. That's how you pronounce this in Greek. It's prosukomai. And it literally means to petition a deity or to pray. It does not have anything to do with commanding, decreeing, or declaring. In fact, nowhere in Scripture do you see that held up as a quote-unquote prayer. Let me give you some examples of what prayer would look like then from, we'll start at the Old Testament. Old Testament, Daniel chapter 9, we give a great example of a prayer given by Daniel himself. It says in Daniel chapter 9, verse 1, <clears throat> In the first year of Darius, the son of Asuerus, by, by descent a Mede, who was made king over the realms of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, perceived in the books the number of years that, according to the word of Yahweh, 
to Jeremiah the prophet must pass before the end of desolations of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. So then I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking him by prayer and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and he made and made confession saying, O Yahweh, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and done wrong, acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and rules. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. To you, O Yahweh, belong righteousness, but to us open shame. As at this time the men of Judah to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to all of Israel, those who are near and those who are far away, and all the lands to which you have driven them because of the treachery that they have committed against you. To us, O Lord, belongs open shame to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. To, you, to the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness for we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of Yahweh our God by walking in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. All of Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, refusing to obey your voice. And the, and the curse and oath that are written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out upon us because we have sinned against him. He has confirmed his word, which he spoke against us and against our rulers, who ruled us by bringing upon us a great calamity, for under the whole heaven there has not been done anything like what has been done against Jerusalem, as it has been written in the law of Moses, and all of this calamity has come upon us, yet we have not entreated the favor of the Lord our God, turning from our iniquities and gaining insight by your truth. Therefore, the Lord, therefore the Lord has kept ready the calamity and has brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all the works that he has done, and we have not obeyed his voice. And now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and have made a name for yourself, at this day we have sinned and we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all your righteous acts, let your anger and your wrath turn away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy hill, because for our sins and for our iniquity, the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a byword among all who are around us. Now, therefore, our, O oh, our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his pleas for mercy. And for your own sake, O oh Lord, make your face shine upon your sanctuary, which is desolate. O oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations. So you'll note, this is a great example of what it means to petition, to plea, and ask for mercy. No commanding, no decreeing, no you know, any of that nonsense at all. When you read the Psalms, if you were to search the Psalms for the word cry or its derivatives, we'll pay attention to some of these verses. I cried aloud to Yahweh, and he answered me from his holy hill. Psalm 5, give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you do I pray. And over and again, you see examples in the Psalms of crying out to God, beseeching his help, calling upon him to have mercy, to hear our prayers and petitions. That's an example of really what it looks like to pray. And then if you look up the word pray in the Psalms, Psalm 5, 2, give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you do I pray. Psalm 116, so I called on the name of Yahweh. O Yahweh, I pray, deliver my soul. Psalm 118, save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. And you'll note, again, that prayer is humble. Prayer is a plea to God for mercy. Prayer is a plea to God to meet our needs, to deliver us from evil, to deliver us from evil circumstances and persecution and suffering. And it is humble. Jesus gives a great example of prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane in Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 36. It says, Jesus went to them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and I pray. And then taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And he said, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. 
And going a little farther, he fell on his face, and he prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, for the second time, he went and he prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Notice the humble prayer that Jesus gives, right? So those are biblical examples of prayer. And it fits perfectly with what the Greek word for prayer is, prosukamai, to petition, a deity. It means to talk to God, to ask him and expect him to answer and to hear our prayers and our plea for mercy. Well, let's see if that is what Todd White is going to do here at Gateway Church. Will he get on his knees and pray? Because he said he was going to pray. He was going to pray for the people there. That's what he said he was going to do. Let me back it up just a little bit so you can hear how he says we're going to pray and see if this sounds like a prayer to you i promise put your hand on somebody's shoulder beside you please so here's what we're going to do we're just going to pray for one another it's only going to take a just a a minute or two are you ready oh yeah who believes that god can do this all right okay so i want you to just say this we're going to go from the top of the head down all right so i want you to repeat after me in the name of jesus we command Every uh, you what you command. This isn't a prayer. Nobody there is praying at all. Every issue in the, head, in the head, in the brain, the, brain. the, ears, the ears, the eyes, the, eyes. the nose, the, nose. The, mouth. the mouth. We command complete healing now. We command complete healing now in the eyes nose and ears you're going to note that uh, people there are still wearing glasses uh, even though he commanded all of the issues about the eyes to be solved right jesus name in the neck every issue of pain discomfort discs be healed right now in jesus name did you you see this fellow right here he's got glasses on This lady, she has glasses on. Notice he's looking. His eyes are open. He's looking through his glasses. All of the things commanded regarding his eyes didn't work. Never trust a faith healer who wears glasses or who commands you to command God in the name of Jesus to make all eye things work, and you're still wearing glasses. Shoulders, in the name of Jesus, be healed right now. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Back. Back. Every, disc. Every disc. Spinal cord. Spinal cord. Every, nerve. Every nerve. Be healed. Be healed. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. Hips. Hips. Every, joint Every joint in the body. In the body. Be, made Be made whole right now. Right now. That, includes that includes knees and ankles and fingers and elbows. In the name of Jesus, we command every organ. We command. They're not praying. They're not asking God for nothing. This isn't a prayer. To be healed right now in Jesus' name. From the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. And any disease. Everyone's still wearing their glasses. Leave. Right now, now. in Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to physically check your body from head to toe right now. If it was your neck, I want you to check it. Your elbows, your shoulders. Those your shoulders, just raise them up and check them. Your hips, your knees, whatever it was. Your eyeglasses. If there's physical change in your body right now, I want you to wave both hands over your head. Again, this guy is great at parlor tricks, but I still see people wearing their glasses, and he commanded commanded that all the issues in the eyes be solved. The guy is a phony baloney, and that wasn't prayer. And the sad part is, is that the people there 
don't know their Bible well enough to know that what that was was not a prayer. And nowhere in Scripture we taught to do that. And not only that, they're not even honest enough to look around and go, wait a second, everyone's still wearing glasses, to realize, hey, something's afoot here. N not that their eye is a foot, because their foot is a foot. But you get what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. So we're at the end of another dumpster fire. And uh, it, just to remind you, if you'd like to leave comments, leave them in the comments section. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so when, so you can be notified when we put up new episodes and new resources. Of course, if you'd like to uh, support us financially so that we can keep doing what we're doing, we truly could use your support. And the way you do that is by uh, supporting us on Patreon or becoming a crew member. Information is down below on how you can join our crew or support us on Patreon. Of course, another way that is a great way to support us is to share these videos so that other people can see them. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ, his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Amen.